Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Now as I record this in the middle of December 2020, XRP and the entire crypto asset class, mind you, is not in a bubble right now. And I firmly believe that XRP and the rest of the crypto asset class will enter a bubble. And I don't, like from my perspective sitting here at, at this particular juncture in time, uh, knowing that I've been purchasing outside of bubble territory the last three years, for, for those of us that are already holding, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But I remember when I entered the world of crypto, November 2017, it was very crystal clear that at that point, uh, prices has gone so parabolic by the end of 2017. It was clear we were in bubble territory. And there were some people that disputed that, but I, I held the opinion pretty firmly um, after listening to a, a, a ton of uh, you know, professionals, I'd say, in the world of finance, not specifically crypto necessarily, some of them, sure. But even in the, the world of legacy financial, it's it's just uh, it's a, it's the case that without knowing what a particular asset is, if you show a, show somebody that knows like halfway how to read a chart, if you show them the, the what happened with Bitcoin in terms of price action, show them that chart, but don't tell them what it is. Just by looking at the formation on the chart, any anyone with half a brain would say that's a bubble. And so I was aware of this, and it's not just. Um, the crypto asset class that forms bubble, every single asset class does. Gold's been in a bubble. The housing market's been in a bubble. Stocks, the stock market's been in a bubble. And, and so it's just because something goes into bubble territory, it doesn't mean that it's going to pop and go to zero permanently. Now, you can get things like tulip mania, which uh, if you're not aware of, it's when tulip bulbs were outrageously priced. I'm not going to go into the whole story in this video. I've talked about it before. But uh, tulip mania, th that was a bubble. And that one never should have inflated. And so it did pop and go to zero. And so you get people that for the last decade plus have been saying Bitcoin is a bubble that's going to pop and go to zero. And I say, oh, is that the case? Well, if that is the case, why is it that the bubble inflates, it pops, but then it reinflates, gets even bigger, and then it pops, and then it reinflates and you know, to get even bigger, and then it pops again, and so on and so forth. Well, it's because this one is not one that pops and goes to zero, and it's never going to. Well, not the crypto asset class specifically. And, and so it, it's worth being aware of this here. It's not some sort of horrible thing. But uh, when we're talking about bubble territory, you know what I'm talking about, right? You do know, right? Let me spell it out. I'm talking about parabolic price action for XRP, where XRP hits its all-time high and then flies past it, entering a new realm of price discovery. That's what we're talking about, and I think that's what ultimately will uh, be in the, in our future. I, I don't know. I don't pretend to know what the timeline is. I'm not a chart analyst. I don't want to be. I'm more interested in researching fundamentals and you know just the news on a database basis, that type of stuff. I'm more of like a big picture type of guy. That's just what's more interesting to me. But uh, it's I firmly believe it's coming. And look, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say. All right. I just think it's fun to talk about this stuff and share my everyday Joe Schmo opinion. But that that is all that it is, and it's it's fun to make YouTube videos as a hobby. So just want to be super clear about that. Um, but but into this piece now, billionaire Glenn Hutchins explains why Bitcoin is no longer a bubble. And so think about it. We're at prices that are. Um, you know, been <laughs> above what we'd ever seen in 2017. Back then it was a bubble, now it's not. So why the hell is that? It's, it's a fun discussion, so check this out. Uh, Glenn Hutchins, the co-founder of $39 billion private equity firm Silver Lake, believes that there are real differences between the current state of the crypto market and late 2017, according to his recent interview with CNBC. And here's a quote. There are some real differences between this market and that one is that it is driven not by retail investors. This one is driven by major investors and companies. You've reported on Paul Tudor Jones and Stan Druckenmiller's investments into Bitcoin. A lot of companies have invested in it or like PayPal are offering it as a payment service. And this is like a narrative that I've been driving because I firmly believe it to be the case. And I think it's going to be incredible for XRP. And some of you out there that are maybe new to the space, you'd be like, well, what's that matter? It's, it's they're, buying, they're buying Bitcoin. You know, that's where most of it's going. I mean, sure, some institutions do hold XRP, but it's almost all Bitcoin, right? Why should we be excited about that? And it's not, it's not a complex answer. It's that there's... A, <laughs> Eight years worth of data proving that XRP follows Bitcoin in terms of price action. Eight years worth of data. 
And it, it, up to this very second, this very day, it's still true. And so what happens is as this purchasing happens and Bitcoin becomes more scarce because there's less available on spot exchanges for the everyday retail investor, well, that drives up, that's a huge part of what drives up the price of Bitcoin. And then XRP follows and more people as they jump in also, of course, they're going to look into the additional altcoins, this or that. I mean, that's how I came across this. You know, the, the way I jumped into crypto is I, I saw a, a really negative headline about Ethereum getting hacked. I think it was from an exchange. It's been a while since I thought about this, but I read this article and I was like, what the hell is this? And then I just jumped in that day on a whim and I had no idea what I was about to discover. Like the idea that you can have business models that could not exist without a technologically sufficient decentralized cryptocurrency with an open market price. Like businesses, literally, they can't conduct their business model without this technology. I was like, that represents value. That was my aha moment. I, I just, my mind was blown after actually looking into this stuff. And so there'll be some people like I happen to mean, you know, November of 2017 that come along. And perhaps you're one of them if you're one of the newer people. But whenever you jumped in, whether you've been here longer than me or shorter, it doesn't matter. We we here, if, if I could be so bold as to speak for the XRP community, at least a little bit, I think we all believe that we found something before the vast majority of other humans. And I've mentioned and I mentioned in another video just the other day that it's roughly, this is the best estimate I can get, but it's probably fairly close. It's only 0.002% of humans on the planet that have ever that have ever at even a single moment of time ever purchased and held XRP. 0.002%. And with that tiny number, you still saw XRP run up from 20 something cents to almost $4 a few years ago. So what's gonna happen is more money flows into the space as more retail investors find out, as more institutional money comes in and purchases up, not just Bitcoin, but ultimately even more XRP. What do you think is gonna freaking happen here? But anyway, peace continues. Hutchins also mentioned that uh, the number of people participating in the Bitcoin economy has significantly increased based on wallet growth. And he singled it out as one of the technology trends that is currently thriving. Now, Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency that has piqued Hutchins' interest, attention rather. Uh, the billionaire investor also took notice of the stablecoin boom that has defined the cryptocurrency industry in 2020. And here's another quote. Stable coins are crypto assets pegged to the US dollar, uh, are seeing widespread adoption. They are on pace to transfer $1 trillion of value in 2020. And still, like, I, I still think Tether's a, a scary thing, perhaps uh, not going to end so well. Maybe it will. We'll see. I don't, I don't know for sure. But even so, there's no denying that uh, stable coins, including Tether, are they're getting used for something here. <laughs> they certainly are. Anyway, the market cap of the flagship stablecoin Tether is currently approaching $20 billion. Mind you, in March of this year, its, uh, its market cap was $4 billion. So another $16 billion has been printed. Freaking crazy, man. Anyway, um, check out this piece now. MicroStrategy may soon hold upwards of 0.4% of all Bitcoin. Mind you, this is one company, one publicly traded company, and they beat pretty much all the other publicly traded companies on the planet. Not literally, but, you know, most of them. And um, they dove in in a big way and as far as purchasing Bitcoin. Great for us as XRP holders again. But what do you think is going to happen as this trend persists and it becomes commonplace for publicly traded companies to hold cryptocurrency as a treasury reserve asset rather than the United States dollar, which is being debased through endless printing? You know, it couldn't be more clear to me. The Bitcoin space was rocked with news last week that MicroStrategy would be purchasing an additional stash of Bitcoin. The firm, a business services and analytics company based in the United States, has purchased $450 million worth of Bitcoin over the past few months to hedge its treasury. The company held a large sum of cash that it decided to invest in the cryptocurrency due to the unprecedented macro conditions. And so to be clear, what's happened in 2020, this dumpster fire of a year, you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's actually, as terrible as that is, what's happened this year, it's actually spurred adoption, genuine adoption of cryptocurrency. So like this, this all would have happened, but maybe it would have taken a little bit longer to see the incredible bullish action in crypto that we're now seeing today. Maybe it would have taken months or another year longer. I, I don't know. But it seems very clear that these big players have jumped in. And, and in the case of MicroStrategy, 
the CEO, Michael Saylor, absolutely acknowledged that it was due to all of this. This is not something that they, he otherwise would have thought about or considered. But just with the debasement of the United States dollar, and he, he like he called their their reserves, their United States dollar reserves, uh, like a melting ice cube. That's that's what he was equating it to. And I think it's actually a pretty damn fair comparison here. But anyway, while some thought that their move was foolish, foolish purchasing that many that much Bitcoin, it has paid off for MicroStrategy quite handsomely. The company's stock is up over 100% since its first Bitcoin purchase, and it appears that there is a demand for further Bitcoin investment. The firm revealed last week that it had raised $650 million in the sale of debt, a senior convertible notes, to qualified institutional buyers. With the capital less with I'm sorry, with that capital less fees, MicroStrategy will be purchasing Bitcoin. And here's a quote. MicroStrategy estimates that the net proceeds from the sale of the notes will be approximately $634.9 million after deducting the initial purchaser's discounts and commissions and estimated offering ex uh, expenses payable by MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy intends to invest the net proceeds from the sale of the notes in Bitcoin in accordance with its Treasury Reserve policy pending identification of working capital needs and other general corporate purposes. And so this is where it gets even more interesting to me. It's this little subheading here. More than 0.4% of the circulating Bitcoin supply may soon be owned by MicroStrategy. Again, even if 0.4 doesn't sound big to you, this is one company on the planet. <laughs> supply and demand, my friends. This is going to get freaking cry cry. Yeah, just, just believe that, believe that. Analysis compiled by analysts at Masari found that after this purchase, the firm may own somewhere around or more than 0.4% of all circulating Bitcoin. Ryan Watkins, the researcher at the firm, wrote the following. The above doesn't even include uh, MSTR's just completed $650 million convertible note raise, whose proceeds will be used to buy Bitcoin. This will take MSTR's total Bitcoin holdings well over $1 billion. Depending on the price it pays, MSTR could end up owning 0.4% of the circulating Bitcoin supply. Which means that this company could be one of the most valuable companies on the entire planet. <laughs> I know it's, it sounds crazy, but this is real, my friends. Like This is, this is happening. Ain't, ain't none gonna stop it. This is the trend that we are on. So as an XRP holder, I, could, I personally could not be more excited. And, and, and again, eventually we will enter a phase of maturation within this asset class where utility is going to play a greater role. But I think that that's going to bode well for XRP too. And in the meantime, let's just enjoy the fact that XRP follows Bitcoin and all of this awesome stuff is happening for Bitcoin. Cool. This is why I'm not a maximalist. Being a maximalist is freaking stupid, and I ain't no damn idiot stick. I'm just saying. I'll wrap up here, though. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.